Alright, so to get that solder out, what I'm going to do is uh, throw some flux down. I use uh, MG Chemicals No Clean Flux Paste. Put that down and, uh, and use some some extra solder on top of that to get that other stuff hot. I'll, this what I'll do is I'll throw some extra on there to get it hot and then I'll wick it out with some copper wick. But uh, that's how I get it warmed up and I throw some extra on. So what I did is uh, do some desoldering on those main four points in the charging port and took a, the vast majority of the solder out but then what I did is uh, use a heat gun and mask everything off pretty much with, uh, with aluminum foil and I have this, this heat dissipation pad that I use that works really well. Uh, anyway so desoldered it out for the most point and then After that, I use a heat gun and remove the old charging point port. Now we're going to uh, solder this new one on. I've uh, got everything cleaned. I'm not going to show you the whole process of cleaning everything up. It's just way too tedious. So what I'm going to do now is solder the new charging port in. And there's uh, seven of these little pins that go to seven different contact points. So I'm just going to use a little bit of flux. And now I have to very carefully put these uh, seven contact points down. Uh, what I did first is solder on the four main points that go through the board on the other side. That's been done already. So it's firmly put into place and soldered into position uh, before I put down these little seven contact points. I'm about ready to do that now. And uh, Pretty much what you're going to do is just put a really small amount down and just play with it and work it from one side to the other and just try to drop a little bit onto each point. And you really want to count on the flux working to float that solder in the right way so that it's only bonding to the adhesion points on that. So. All right, here I'm using a wick where I got a little bit too much solder, so I'll, I'll just pull a little bit of that off. If you got a little bit too much, you just control it and pull a little bit off here and there. So let's go ahead and watch the rest of the process, but um. It just takes a lot of practice with soldering. If you do enough little stuff, I'll, here I'm using like a steel spudger to help to even physically guide the solder to each pin. Um, that's you can order those off of Amazon. Just look for a steel spudger. It's got a really really fine point. I use a couple of them. One I use for just general stuff, and one I only use for soldering. And I'm very careful with the tip. I never. It's very tempting to use it for other things as a handy tool, but. To keep the tip perfect on it and never use it for anything else. So you try to break it. So keep one nice and perfect and nice and pointy and see so you can get in there with a steel spudger and, and help separate your solder. You can physically get in there and pull it around and, uh, and put it in the position that you want. So it's a real handy tool. So the spudger is also maneuvering parts around. It works really well for that too. If things aren't flowing just right, um, go ahead and take a toothbrush or whatever you tip, get some denatured alcohol, clean everything off, and uh, put some new flux paste down and start soldering over again. If things start getting burnt and dirty and the flux isn't, and the solder is not flowing right, um, it's just because things are dirty. So once you get the solder down, you got a little bit of work done, on it, but it's not attaching, it's not finishing right. And go ahead and everything's in place. You can see I already have solder in place, so I cleaned up everything. I uh, redid it. I'm going to go ahead and work it cold now without any paste.
to move it. And uh, now I'm going to throw some flux on it and uh, get the get everything to bead right. <laughs> 